Urinary catheters, everything one needs to know. Part one, introduction. Today we're gonna to discuss why some patients require a urinary catheter, whereabouts these catheters can be placed along the GU tract. We're gonna explore the different elements of urinary catheters, such as the materials they're made out of, the difference between a single, two-way, or three-way port system, We'll discuss the different applications for different catheter tips, as well as different French sizes or diameters of the urinary catheters. We will discuss the difference between the different drainage systems and which will be most applicable for your specific patient. And lastly, we will discuss the application of special coatings for urinary catheters. Why do some patients require a catheter? There are many different reasons, including acute urinary retention, chronic urinary retention, gross hematuria, urosepsis, lower urinary obstruction, neurogenic bladder, surgery, and the need for accurate fluid balance. What are urinary catheters? In its simplest form is a hollow tube that is placed somewhere into the urinary tract that allows for the drainage of urine. An external catheter can be placed around the penis, which is usually referred to as a condom catheter. Next, drainage can happen from the urethra, either by an indwelling or straight catheter. If the catheter is directly into the bladder, this is referred to as a suprapubic catheter. A catheter can be inserted into a ureter. This is rarely seen outside the operating room. Commonly, you might see a ureteric stent. If the catheter is directly connected to the kidney, it is referred to as a nephrostomy tube. This can either be done open or percutaneous. The term Foley comes from the designer Frederick Foley, a surgeon working in Boston, Massachusetts in the 1930s. Different elements of urinary catheters. First off, there are many different materials that the catheter itself is made out of. Most commonly, you'll see latex. It's important, though, that since latex is becoming a very common allergy, that other options were developed. The next option is silicone. This is commonly used for patients that have a latex allergy. It's a little bit more firm and stiff when you're catheterizing a patient, as well as there's PVCs. The next question you're going to ask yourself, what's the purpose of the catheter? If you're just doing intermittent drainage of the bladder, you're going to want a one-way catheter. If you're looking for an indwelling or continuous drainage system, the catheter will be required to have two ports, a drainage as well as a second, which is the balloon device. The balloon port allows for water to be inserted into the catheter, which then in turn fills up the balloon, which helps keep the catheter in place. If the patient requires irrigation as well as continuous drainage, they would most likely need a large French three-way catheter. This has not only a balloon and drainage port, but it allows for irrigation as well. Sizes of urinary catheters. Catheters come in a variety of sizes and the diameter is referred to as French. Usually they're color coded based on the French. 8 French and 10 French are usually pediatric catheters. As you increase in size, 12, 14, and 16 French are the common sizes for adult indwelling urethral catheters. 18 and 20 French can be used for suprapubic or nephrostomy tubes. Towards the end of the spectrum, 22, 24, and 26 French are used for the evacuation of debris and or irrigation. Depending on the indication for the catheter, there are many different types of tips to choose from. Your traditional catheter usually has opposing eyes. Depending on the manufacturer, this might be the common catheter that's available or the Robinson, which has the drainage eyes in line with each other. Often, urologists will ask for a council tip catheter. All this means is that there is a hole at the very end of the tip of the catheter. This allows for the catheter to be placed over a guide wire. Council tip can be combined with other different types of catheter tips. 
Semen catheter is used specifically for males with possible enlarged prostate or obstruction. It has a slight curvature to the tip, which helps navigate around the membranous urethra. The cude is very similar to that of the teamens and has a curvature to help navigate lower urinary tract obstruction. Usually, the terms teamens and cude are used interchangeably. Next is a whistle tip. This catheter is best used for evacuation of clots or debris out of the bladder. The next two types of catheter tips are referred to as self-retaining catheters. The malincot comes in two or four winged and does not have a balloon mechanism attached to it. Once it is deployed, the wings fold out, which prevents the catheter from becoming dislodged. The pezzer looks very similar to a mushroom cap, has the same idea as a malincot that is self-retaining. The hematuria catheter is usually a large French and has an opening for irrigation as well as drainage. Some of them are reinforced with metal rings in order to help prevent further blockage. Balloon mechanisms. Depending on the type of French and purpose for the urinary catheter, there are different sizes of balloons that will be accompanied. On the smaller pediatric catheters, the balloon is approximately three cc's or ml's. As you move up to the larger urinary catheters, especially those that are used for hematuria, the balloon can get up to 30 cc's. Historically, it was important before you catheterize a patient to check the balloon to make sure that it was intact. This is no longer encouraged as it can cause the balloon not to properly deflate and cause urethral trauma. It is important that you use sterile water when instilling the balloon. If normal saline is used, it will crystallize, leading to creep and causing urethral trauma upon removal. Whenever you are repositioning or removing catheters, it is important to check how large the balloon is. This can be found on the hub where the sterile water is instilled. Additionally, it can be important to check the charting and documentation at the time of insertion. Sometimes balloons are not fully inflated and occasionally on rare circumstances, they can be overinflated. Catheter coatings. Over the years, many people have tried to develop catheter coatings that will decrease the risk of catheter related urinary tract infections. The two main types are antiseptic catheters that are impregnated with a silver alloy. And the second type are antimicrobial, which are impregnated with antibiotics such as nitrofurazone. Despite many attempts, there is not good evidence to support the use of these types of special coatings. Patients often report that these catheters are more uncomfortable than your traditional uncoated urinary catheters. Did you know that catheters have been around since 3000 BC and have been made out of many different types of materials over the years, including hollowed out bamboo straws, rolled up palm leaves, the hollow top of onions, as well as a variety of different materials, such as gold, silver, copper, brass, and lead. Now talk about some uncomfortable catheters. Drainage systems. First, there's a urostomy appliance. This has an adhesive portion that will cover the stoma and connect up to a drainage bag. This is commonly used for nephrostomy tubes. Sometimes it can be used in combination of suprapubic as well in order to be placed over the catheter to decrease leakage. Often patients will use a leg bag or an abdominal bag, which allows them to have easier mobilization throughout the day and promote physical activity. These leg bags or abdominal bags are very useful, but do not function well at night. The traditional urinary drainage bag is two liters and is often used for hospitalized patients or as a nighttime bag for patients with long-term indwelling catheters. The next drainage system is a urometer. This has a special plastic container on it to allow for accurate output of urine. This is commonly used in the surgical patient as well as critically ill patients. The last type of bag is a CBI drainage bag or continuous bladder irrigation. 
is a simple, large, four liter bag that has a spout on the bottom so it can easily be emptied. Usually in the hospital, you will see these accompanied by many bags of normal saline, as well as a bucket, often have to be emptied multiple times within the hour. In our next video, we will talk about different methods of catheterization, as well as catheter care.